Thank you so much, Linda. Jim said had a tube. Did you guys see? He what? He went. Yeah. Good morning, Orville Baptist Church. Good morning. Good morning. It's great to see all of you here. The smiles on the faces, the um, checking in with each other is wonderful. So we would like to um, start with a song called You Never Let Go. It might be a new one for you. But if you think about it, once Jesus comes within your heart and the Holy Spirit comes to stay, you're never alone, and he never lets go of you. Whether you're having a really good day or a really bad day, he does not let go of you for one second. So let's stand up and let's praise the Lord.
right. Good song this morning to be able to sing and affirm that he is never going to let go of you. <clears throat> I'm going to say it in the sermon, but I think I need to say it beforehand because maybe somebody needs to hear it twice. And uh, that is, in Moses' time, the presence of the Lord was with the people. But in our time, the presence of the Lord is in his people. It is in us. And so that is reason to be able to say he is never going to let go of us. He is with us, and he is going to keep us and guide us, and we're going to see that this morning. I'm so glad you're here. Maybe you've got a praise. You kind of see some decorations on the side. We're getting ready uh, and using some of the decorations that were used yesterday for a marriage conference that's next Saturday from 8.30 in the morning until 4 in the afternoon, one day. And there's still time for you to be a part of that. All you have to do is let us know that you're coming. And there's a sign-up sheet. Well, you can see either uh, Joanna or Linda. I'm not sure if the sign-up sheet is still here. But there is. All right. So you put your name on the sign-up sheet. We'll have a place prepared just for you. All right. Somebody else with a word of, um, word of praise this morning. Linda. Looking out, I see Jay sitting back there, and he had a very rough week down in the icy part of Arkansas and Oklahoma and Texas, and it's so good to see him back safely. Praise God for that. And I, I wish you guys could see Lee back there praising the Lord during that song. It was amazing. He liked the, he liked the chorus the best. But it's like, what a blessing that was to me just to see. He was moving his arms. It was awesome. <laughs> and the third thing is, um, yesterday <coughs> I was supposed to give a devotion. I even volunteered to do it at 9 and at 8.35. I remembered it. <laughs> so, God is so good. And so he gets all the credit for it. All the credit. And I honestly, I think he on purpose let me not think about it because he had a devotion that he wanted to share with the ladies yep. at Sure House yesterday morning with some of the winged ladies got together and he he just did a great job All right. and I just wanted to make sure he got the glory for it because it wasn't anything I did and Amen. he it was, a, it was great we, did, we had a good time alright wonderful and make sure you share yours <laughs> <laughs> All right, so if you have a praise or two or three, uh, you can uh, share them now. All right, there's Ope. I just want to thank God that my parents get to have 10 years together. Oh. <laughs> if you didn't hear that, they... Uh, Ope is, is uh, praising the Lord. His mom and his dad have celebrated 10 years uh, of wedding together. And so uh, it's good that, uh, that even young children recognize that and find hope in that. Amen? All right. Somebody else? I have one. Cindy. I just, um, I just want to praise the Lord that uh, we, our car was saved. Mandy's car was saved. Uh, Mandy hit a deer this week, and uh, she called me. It was probably one of the funniest things ever. We, we had just had the front end done on her car, and so she called me, and she said, Mom, I hit a deer. And I was just like, oh, we just had this fixed. And so she called the State Highway Patrol, and, and I went out, and it was late at night, so she didn't get out and look at the car. And But when I pulled up, I got out and I went and I looked at the car and I and I I looked at it and I looked at it again and I walked over to Mandy and I said are you sure you hit a deer because there was absolutely no damage to the front of the car and she said yes mom I hit the deer it went in the road it even like went under the car and so she couldn't believe there was no damage either and she got out and and we looked and we did find some fur then in the license plate so we knew you know that she had hit it and turned out she did do um it, it broke the heat shield off the underneath of the car which was no big deal they just put it back on but 
just praise the Lord, she was okay. The car was okay. Yes, that's right. Um, you know, the officer that came, he was like shaking his head. And we were like, she really did hit this deer, you know. <laughs> And, uh, but, but God took care of her and took care of the car, and he knew that, that we really needed that. Yes. And I just praise him that yes. he did that. So. Angels watching over me yeah. everywhere Definitely. I am. Yes. Yanu. Um, well, when I started telling the story, <laughs> just want to thank God for yeah, 10 years, and we had a little celebration yesterday, and all went well. Everybody who came went back safely, so we're glad. Thank God. Yes, yes. Um, Femi and Miriam renewed their vows yesterday and uh, had a small crowd of people, but the most diverse crowd I've ever seen, we had people from uh, Houston, Texas that were here and from Michigan and from Cleveland and from Columbus and uh, just all over. Where at? In Canada, oh yes, your brother was from Canada, uh, and uh, just a uh, a wonderful time together, celebrating. I told uh, Femi in a, in a culture that that is good about saying I don't. It's good to be in a place and to be a part of a couple that still says I still do. So, praise the Lord for that. All right, well, let's uh, go to the Lord in prayer this morning. Almighty God, we do praise you and thank you. We thank you, Lord, that you're close to us. You are in us and you lead us and you guide us according to your Holy Spirit that you have left for us. And that, Lord, your Holy Spirit not only leads us, but leads us into places and paths and occurrences and situations that are good for us. You do not lead us to places where, where it is uh, for our harm, but for our good. Sometimes those uh, travel through some strange places and they seem hard, but they are for our good. All things work together for our good. And so I pray, Lord, that you would use this time to be able to bolster in us the faith that you have given us. That we would be able to stand upon the word that you've given us, knowing that, Lord, your word is true in every situation. And we can trust you because not only are you God, you are a good God who loves us. And so I praise you and thank you this morning and look forward to a time this morning to be able to sing praises with these dear brothers and sisters in Christ to be able to open your word and to be able to allow it to speak to us and to have fellowship with the family that you have given us. In Christ's name I pray, amen. Won't you stand with us as we sing, He Hideth My Soul. Oh 
mothers for your sons, for they would turn away your sons from following me to serve other gods. Then the anger of the Lord would be kindled against you, and he would destroy you quickly. But thus shall you deal with them. You shall break down their altars and dash in pieces their pillars and chop down their ashram and burn their carved images with fire. For you are a holy people to the Lord your God. The Lord your God has chosen you to be a people for his treasured possession out of all the peoples who are on the face of the earth. It is not because you were more in number than any other people that the Lord set his love on you and chose you. For you were the fewest of all peoples. But it was because the Lord loves you and is keeping an oath that he swore to your fathers that the Lord has brought you out with a mighty hand and redeemed you from the house of slavery, from the hand of Pharaoh, the king of Egypt. Now, therefore... That the Lord your God is God. I'm sorry. Know therefore that the Lord your God is God. A faithful God who keeps covenant and steadfast love with those who love him and keeps his commandments to a thousand generations. You may be seated. This morning, I have three points, and they'll be on the next slide. The first one is the command. Israel, be careful to hear my law and do it. Be careful to hear my law and do it. This isn't the first time he has told them that. In fact, it seems as though each time that there's a chapter start, He tells them, hear my word, but don't just hear it, do it. Turn with me, you would, back from chapter 7 back to chapter 4. Verse 1. And now, O Israel, listen to the statutes and the rules that I am teaching you, and do them, that you may live and go in and take possession of the land that the Lord, that the Lord, the God of your fathers, is given you. Chapter 5, verse 1. And Moses summoned all Israel and said to them, Hear, O Israel, the statutes and the rules I speak to you in your hearing today. You shall learn them and be careful to do them. Chapter 6. Verse 1, now this is the commandment and the statutes and the rules that the Lord your God commanded me to teach you, that you may do them in the land in which you are going to possess it, going over to possess it. When we hear the word of God, we are to do what he says. It's very simple. When we hear, we're to do. And he told them over and over again, this is not up for negotiation. This is not up for compromise. When you hear the word of God, you're to do it. This last week, I was with Linda at Sam's Club. She was getting an eye appointment done. And I was just walking around and going from aisle to aisle and looking at the different things that, um, that I saw they had to sell. And I came to one aisle and I was going down the aisle and I saw at the end of the aisle a girl that was waving at me. Now, I'm at an age where they stopped waving a long time ago. <laughs> she had a big smile on her face. She was waving at me. And so I walked up and uh, we had a conversation. And she said, Sam's today is giving away gift cards. And I wanted to be able to share that with you. And so she said, what kind of gas company do you have? And I told her that I have Northeast Ohio. And she said, well, we can't, we can't help you there. You need Dominion or, or one of the others. And 
well, what kind of electric company you have? I said, well, live in, live in a, a city aggregate that has their own. She said, well, we can't, we can't help you with that either. So we had, a, we had a little exchange there. I kind of felt like we had a rapport. She was a very nice girl, probably about 25 to 30. <clears throat> and so I, I asked her to have a good day. She said that, uh, for me to have a good day, and I left. I hadn't walked very far, and the Lord said to me in my spirit, not in an audible voice, but in my spirit, you've got something better to give her. Go do it. It's like, wow. And so I thought, I'll go back. Minutes, I shared with her that the one thing that separates us from a holy God in heaven is our sin. And that Jesus came to pay for our sin by dying on the cross for your sin and for my sin. And I shared with her the gospel about Jesus not only dying on the cross, but also arising from the dead. And I said, if you will receive that today, the scripture says you'll be saved. Would you like to do that? And much to my surprise, she said, yes. So there in an aisle in Sam's Club, we bowed our heads and we prayed and she received Christ. Now, I believe I had very little bit to do with that. I was just at the right place at the right time for God to be able to do what he was already going to do in this young lady's life. I asked her what her name was. She said, Alberto. I said, Alberto? She said, yeah, it's a, it's a, and maybe I don't know even saying it right. Maybe it's Alberto. She said, it's, I think, a Greek name. I said, well, that's pretty. I like it. And so uh, I invited her today to come. I said, I drove all this way from Orville to see you today. Well, you could come and see us today. And as I look out, I don't see her here today, but um, I will, I believe, one day. And again, it had nothing to do with me. It had everything to do with God speaking to me and saying, this is what I want you to do. Do it. And then I didn't know. I was thinking, okay, they're going to say, oh, I, I've done the religious thing. I already heard that. I'll think about it. I know somebody that's, that's a Christian. But to say, yes, that's what I want. Everything else seemed insignificant at that moment. Praise God for his grace in doing what he alone can do. You see, obedience is the simplest course of action. When God speaks, the simplest thing you can do is obey. It's not always the easiest. It is the simplest, though, because usually you hear and you know exactly what he wants you to do. If you're reading God's word and, and, uh, you, and he speaks to you through his word, it's not, it's not jumbled. He speaks louder than someone speaking to you in an audible voice and you know exactly what you are to do. And when we start to compromise and introduce our own wisdom, we have decided that we have devised a plan that's better than God's. And it opens the door for our resistance that leads to our disobedience, which is always sin we're going to see in a minute. Martin Luther, the great reformer, who helped lead the church back to the word of God, once wrote in a sermon, the world at the present time is cleverly discussing how to quell the controversy and strife over doctrine and faith and how to effect a compromise between the church and the papacy. Let the learned, the wise, it is said, the bishops, the emperors, the princesses arbitrate. Each side can easily yield something and it is better concede some things which can be construed according to the individual interpretation than that such than that 
than that so much persecution, bloodshed, war, and terrible endless dissension and destruction be permitted. And then he writes, here, what he just read, what I just read, what he just said, here is a lack of understanding. For un understanding proves by the word of God that such patchwork is not according to God's will. But that doctrine, faith, and worship must be preserved pure and unadulterated. There must be no mingling with human nonsense and human opinions or wisdom. The scripture gives us this rule. We must obey God, not men. Acts chapter 5, verse 29. It's interesting to speculate if Luther would have toned it down, if Luther would have compromised at this vital moment in history, what would the church look like today? But instead, Luther would be quoted as saying, here I stand on the word of God. I can stand nowhere else. Point number two, the warning Compromising my word is always sin. To compromise is to make concessions or accommodations for someone who does not agree with your view with a certain set of standards or a certain set of rules. So in this case, if Israel were to compromise with what they have been told to do to go into the land and to completely take it over. You think that sounds pretty harsh it says in there that they are to have no mercy with anybody let me show you why chapter 9 it's not that God is a cruel God but that God is a God of judgment and sometimes even though his love is long-lasting he is a long-suffering God. His love does come to an end. At the end of his love is judgment. And so here in chapter 9, listen to the word of God in verse 1. Hear, O Israel, you are to cross over the Jordan today to go to possess nations greater and mightier than you, cities great and fortified up to heaven, a people great and tall, the sons of Anakim, whom you know, and of whom you have heard it said, who can stand before the sons of Anak? Know therefore today that he who goes before you is a consuming fire, is the Lord your God. He will destroy them and subdue them before you. So you shall, you shall drive them out and make them perish quickly as the Lord has promised you. Do not say in your heart, after the Lord your God has thrust them out before you, it is because of my righteousness that the Lord has brought me in to possess this land, whereas it is because of the wickedness of these nations that the Lord is driving them out before you. Not because of your righteousness, or the uprightness of your heart are you going to possess the land but because of the wickedness of these nations that the Lord is driving them out before you and that he may confirm the word that the Lord swore to your fathers to Abraham to Isaac and to Jacob he says it's not because of you that I'm driving out these people I am taking this land from them and moving them out of your way is because they are evil. The Canaanites were, were people who were demon-possessed. And he says, I am going to remove them from in front of you and don't have any mercy because I'm not having any mercy as I go. And sometimes I don't understand God's hand, even in my own life. But there are some things in God's word we just have to trust that in everything, God is good. He is just in all that he does. He does no wrong. Even in this. 
certain matters in life, compromise is good. The Bible makes it clear that God does not condone compromising his word. But we do compromise in other things. You compromise in marriage. You better compromise in marriage. You compromise with friends, sometimes even with those who are foes. Wars are even settled by compromise. Your parents, you compromise. It's interesting. I, I love having my daughter-in-law because <clears throat> she tells me things that uh, I didn't know growing up with Matt as a child. <clears throat> she said recently, Matt told me that he never won an argument with you. And you know, all this time, I thought I never won an argument with him. <laughs> So there must have been some compromise that was had in that time. But we can't make terms with Christ. We surrender to Christ. We do not compromise with Christ. We submit our lives to Christ. Christianity does not mean being interested in the things of Christ, it means that I have devoted my life. I am no longer, this is no longer my life. I am now living his life for me. What makes compromise dangerous is the subtle way it approaches. Compromise doesn't have you take everything that you believe and set it aside because you get to hold on to some things. You compromise in areas to make it less than what you wanted in certain areas. Most of us would recoil back if we were told you have to quit serving Jesus. But if someone says to you, you can serve Jesus, but also you can serve this idol. You think, well, that's not too bad. I still get to serve Jesus. You think that would never happen. That's exactly what happened to Israel. Even though he told them to burn all these idols, even the gold on these idols that you're going to, to take away and burn, do not take the gold from them and put that in your pocket because that is not for my people. But yet, over and over again, maybe they learned it from their parents' experience. When they made a golden calf at the bottom of Mount Sinai. When Moses was up on the hill getting the Ten Commandments. Gone for 40 days. And they brought all their gold together and they made a golden calf. And the Lord told Moses, go down. There's a rebellion going on. Down under the hill here. And Moses goes down and he breaks the Ten Commandments. But you know, do you remember what happened to the golden calf? Moses had it burned, pounded into dust, put in the water, and they made him drink it. How bitter would that have been to drink what you had just worshipped? We can't compromise with the things of God. That's what happens, though, sometimes in churches of today. It's not that Satan wants to close churches. Satan just wants to join churches. He wants to be a part of them. So you can have your Jesus and you can have your, your word of God. But let's bring in some of the world, too. Because we need to be, we need to be people who are inclusive. We need to be people that are tolerant. We don't want to turn anybody away. But we can't compromise God's word by joining and compromising with the world. It does not work. It didn't back then, and it does not today. Point number three. The promise. Resisting compromise is not in your strength alone. Go back to chapter 9 real quick. 
Hear, O Israel. You are to cross over the Jordan today to go in and dispossess nations greater and mightier than you, cities great and fortified up to the heaven, people great and tall, the sons of Anakim, whom you know, and of whom you have heard it said, who can stand against the sons of Anak? Now, therefore, today, or I said it again, didn't I? Know therefore today that he who goes over before you as a consuming fire is the Lord your God. He will destroy them and subdue them before you so that you shall drive them out and make them perish quickly as the Lord has promised you. We have seen that obedience brings blessings and disobedience brings curses. He told them if, if they do not, if they do not obey, this is no longer, he says, a unilateral covenant. I'm making a bilateral covenant covenant. You obey and I will bless. But if you disobey, I am not going to bless. And in fact, it is going, not going to go well with you. James chapter 4. Turn with them over there, way over towards the end of the Bible. James chapter 4. James chapter 4, verse 5. Or do you suppose that it is of no purpose that the scripture says he yearns jealously over the spirit that he has made to dwell in us? But he gives more grace. Therefore, it says, God opposes the proud, but he gives grace to the humble. Submit yourselves, therefore, to God. Resist the devil, and he will flee from you. Draw near to God, and he will draw near to you. I brought this up here. This is an umbrella, if you don't know what it is. I'm going to show you how this works. Isn't that cool? Now, some of you are freaking out because I opened an umbrella inside a room, okay? But I don't believe in superstition, and I don't go back to the gods of the sky to be able to say, this is going to be bad luck for Brad, okay? I don't believe in bad luck or good luck. I believe in a gracious and a leading God. But when we are obedient to God, it is though we are under the protection of God. We're under his protection. We're under what he has, is designing for us. But when we're out here, we are not under what God wants for us. We're not under his protection, not under his leadership. We are under our own. We have decided to do our own things and we're going to get wet, right? But when we're under here, we're safe. Umbrella comes from the word umbra, which means protection. It also means to cover as a shade for someone. That's what the Lord was for the people of Israel for 40 years. He was a shade in the daytime. He would have clouds that would cover the earth just where they were at so that they would not endure the heat 
And at night, he was a fire of, of, in the sky, a cloud of, of fire at night so that they would know that their God's presence was with them. But as I told you earlier, God's presence is better for us than it was for them. For with them, it was with them. He was there. They could hear the voice of God at the bottom of the mountain. And they could hear the word of God spoken by Moses to them as he recounted the law to this new generation. But when they came to the point of knowing that God was with them, it was God here who was going before them into these cities. He was going before them. He was driving out people ahead of them. He was a consuming fire. But you know what? In the New Testament, it says here that we have a God. He says, what is it? Is there the scripture? Does it say without reason that he, God, jealously longs for the spirit that he has caused to dwell in us he desires that that spirit be in us and he is jealous that, that spirit would lead us that not any other spirit or any other way would lead us and he gives us grace as we do it that is why the scripture says that he opposes the proud it is the proud who will not come to God and bend their knee before him and say, Lord, I need your help. It is the proud that says, I can do it myself, thank you. It is the proud that says, I know somebody else that has done it and I'm going to trust them more than I trust you. But it is the humble who bows their knee or gets on their face before a holy God and says, Lord, I can't, but I know you can. Submit yourselves, he says, then to God. Submit yourselves then to God. Resist the devil and he will flee. Sometimes we want to negotiate with Satan. It's as bad as negotiating with a bear. We end up having a fur coat. But he says, come near to God and he will will come near to you. When it's our intention to actively pursue a deeper relationship with Almighty God and to obey all things, we are less likely to compromise. When it's our desire to go His way and to obey Him when He says what He, what he wants us to do, we're less likely to compromise. We will then, when we're close to him, we'll more readily recognize the things that seek to draw us away from him. And we will readily, more readily recognize his voice and we will trust him when he speaks to us. And we will know it is always for our good, even though we don't think we can do it. When Israel was going into this land and Jericho had walls, you need to kind of read that account. Jericho's walls were great. They were thick and they were high. And there was no way that this ragtag group of Israelites were going to be able to overcome them. But you remember the story, right? And the walls came tumbling down. Why? Because they used dynamite? They used aircraft carriers from out in the sea, shot some missiles over? They had some F-15s fly in and take care of it? No, because God went before them. And God is the one who brings us to where he wants us to be. And when we focus on God and living in relationship with him and with his people, we come to the understanding of the multitude of his holiness and the crushing nature of sin in our life when it happens. And then when we humble ourselves and we repent, we understand the depth of his grace. 
We long to follow him in all our ways and to share the good news of salvation with others. The better we know God, the better we can resist temptation and compromise won't be important. This morning, the question is, are you compromising something in your life right now? Are you holding on to something that God says, I don't want you holding in your hands? Because you have been chosen. You're a holy vessel of mine. I have chosen you. You are mine. And it's not because of you. It's not because you were great. And in fact, it's not because of your righteousness at all. As he told the Israelite people, it is because of my grace and my mercy and my love upon you. Don't compromise with God. Compromise may take place in many different forms, but it never works out when you compromise with God. God is a God we trust. God is a God we obey. And God is always desiring for our good. In the land, he says, in the land, it will go well with you if you listen and you do it. Let's pray. Father, I thank you that we're in the land today. We're not in the eternal realm yet, but we are here on the land that you've given us. We're still people made of the dust of the earth, and to the dust of the earth we will return. And Father, I thank you that, Lord, we can see today that while we walk and tread this earth, we do so as a people of God for our God. That others might see our lives and want our God. And that when you call us and command us and tell us what you want in our life, we are to do it. And then the scripture says, there is life. Father, thank you for this week and for Albedo. I pray your blessing in her life. I pray, Lord, that what you began this week in her life, you will complete until the day of your coming. I pray, Lord, that you would use that opportunity to not only encourage me, but to encourage this body of believers as well. Lord, whatever you're calling us to do today, now in this time of invitation, we open this time where we will stand and we will sing. And if, Lord, you're calling someone to make a decision for your glory, Father, may they do as you instructed Israel to do. Here and do it. In Christ's name I pray. Amen.